And with that, let's go ahead and throw it up to Linkus for this Wind Waker run. Take it away, man. All right. Well, hello, everybody. My name is Link7, uh, and today we're going to be doing a speedrun of The Legend of Zelda, <laughs> The Wind Waker, Any Percent. Uh, there's a couple of things I want to go over. Uh, however, we do have this beautiful intro in this version of the game, so we're going to do the intro as we watch the intro. So if time is ready, we can go in three, two, one, go. All right, um, but yeah, so uh, in the past recent GDQs, you've noticed that we've been speedrunning on the HD version of this game. Uh, however, recently, uh, it was just discovered that you can do the big sequence break barrier skip on the Genki version, which has been impossible for, well, ever since launch and for the two years that it was found for the HD version. Um, so after that was found, we've been grinding to try and make a route work uh, for an RTA setting, which hopefully will be right now. Uh, and you're also going to notice that, uh, unlike the HD version, this is being played on the Japanese version. Uh, number one, text is actually faster on the GameCube version when you play in Japanese. And then one of the major glitches that we're going to go over later in the run only works on this version, because it's kind of like the 1.0 release, because uh, it was released a couple of months before the international releases. Um, but yeah, also next to me uh, on the couch, or well, on the chair, I should say in this case, I have a Gymnast86. Hello. Um, he's a fellow Wind Waker runner. Uh, he runs a ton of different Zelda games. Um, but yeah, so we're kind of just going to go through this run. I'm going to do our best to explain everything as it goes by. Um, there is a glitch coming up right as we get past the intro, but uh, this intro is actually kind of long. It's like five, six minutes. So if you want to read like one or two donations before we get there, uh, that would be great. Sounds good. Let's start with $200 from Vicky. Honk? No? Uh, okay. Thanks to Linkus and the whole Zelda speedrun community for keep wrecking these Zelda games. Keep up the awesome work and good luck on your run. Thank you. <laughs> the crowd is excited today. I mean, it is Friday. <laughs> Got time for another? Yeah, one more. Uh, I've got $40 here from Leave Blank for Anonymous. Just says, Posa. <laughs> Posa. No Posa today. It will be item instead in Japanese. All you weeps out there can read this perfectly, actually. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. I'm not a true weeb. I can't read the text. I just watch anime. Uh, anyways. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so coming up right after this intro, uh, the infamous pause trick, as we just kind of referenced in that donation, uh, is coming up. And this version is a little bit different. So um, to go over the swim mechanics in Wind Waker, when you swim in the water, uh, you can only swim until a certain amount of speed, and then the game will cap your speed, so you can't swim faster than that. However, a common like oversight for developers in a lot of different Nintendo games, especially, is that they don't cap how fast you can go backwards. So if you're somehow able to get negative speed, you can keep getting negative speed without the game ever capping it. And that is what the manual Super Swim abuses. So in Wind Waker, when you turn around, the game is going to add a very small amount of negative speed. Uh, and if you do that frame perfectly, you can actually just gain more and more and more until you eventually get to the speed you need to basically perform a Super Swim. Uh, that's why we call it manual. Um, so there's two ways of doing this. It used to only be one, but there's actually something new since the last GDQ. So what we used to do previously, and you're still going to see it because I'm going to do part of it with the old strat and part of it with the new strat, is that I'm going to have to try and pause buffer my game frame perfectly uh, because a human can't theoretically consistently flick the analog stick 30 times a second because the turnarounds have to be frame perfect. Uh, however, pretty recently we did discover that you can actually hold a slight angle in the analog stick when you plug it in uh, the controller. So you move the actual dead zone of the analog stick and that means that you can actually get speed without pause buffering if you can flick the analog stick only about like 15 to 17 times per second. Um, it's still a good amount of speed. That's why I can't do it like for 30 seconds straight. But I will try and show both methods off uh, so you can get a good idea of how Wind Waker has progressed since it was uh, shown last time at GDQ. Oi! <laughs> that was a really good one. <laughs> Beautiful. Got a bunch of Errol fans in the crowd <laughs> exactly. back here. <laughs> Oi! <laughs> Unfortunately, this is going to be the only time you see her, so you have to enjoy the moment while it lasts. 
All right, time to wake up, Link. It's time to do this GDQ run. All right. Uh, it's also going to be a little bit awkward because right now, since my analog stick thinks that I'm holding towards the right the entire time, even though I'm not touching it, or to the left, sorry, um, I have to awkwardly hold outside of the notches. So if I want to go up, I have to hold like up towards the right because uh, I'm kind of like playing and trying to go against the force of what the analog stick is doing. Uh, but it is essential for the first part. So, uh, yeah, I hope you like controller sounds, by the way. There's going to be a bit of a coming up right here. <laughs> I'm going to do my best to get a good amount of speed so you can get a good idea uh, of what I uh, do when I do these runs nowadays. So let's see. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump in the water, and we're not going to get anything out of us that I would normally do. I'm immediately going to try and uh, go towards the side here, and then we're going to do this. I should have gotten a decent amount of speed there. Okay. So you're gonna notice that from doing that, Link is now moving backwards in the water. And that is because I was able to get negative speed. Now, like I said, I can't, like normally that would be enough to get all of the speed, but I can't do it 30 times a second, I'm sorry. Uh, so I can only get a good amount. But after I do that, I now need to pause buffer this. So what I basically have to do is I have to time this, because if you pause while the pause animation is happening, the game is going to eat your input. So I basically hold down, I double tap the pause button. Uh, the reasoning for that is because if I somehow press it a frame early, then at least my backup pause will save me so I don't completely kill all my speed. Uh, if I pause one frame late, then it's going to not gain me any speed, but it's not going to lose me any either. So yeah, we're going to do this for a bit. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, compared to HD, the pause mini takes a lot longer on this version, so it's a bit awkward. By the way, gymnast, I'm actually going to need your help here because I can't see where I'm sitting. I actually base when I should do this upon the timer. Uh, what is the timer on right now? The timer is currently at 7 minutes. 7 minutes, okay. Can you let me know when it's at 7.45? Yeah. Here. We've hit 7.45. 7.45. Let me check my speed quickly, though. Ah, uh, that's... Okay, I think I need about 70 units of speed more. I look at Link's behavior in the water to base how much speed I have. So my end goal of this is to get enough speed to where Link can move from the center of the screen to behind the camera in only one frame. And that is at about 500 units of speed. For reference, a normal roll would be about 28 units of speed. <laughs> All right, <laughs> don't get too excited yet, I can still hit the beat. So now you can see the Link is spinning around and he's basically doing what I was pause buffering automatically because he's turning past the camera one frame. Now I need to very carefully get to the corner of this beach so I can get an area fill. Um, then I need to turn around and wait. Yeah, we're good. This worked. All right. <laughs> All right. 
Yeah, so that is the manual super swim in The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. Yeah. And the, the spooky thing about that is when I did the up target charge right there in the end, if I would be a few frames late, I would lose all my speed and have to redo the entire setup over again with the boss buffering. So that's why I said that it's not over yet. Also, if you ever touch the ground for even as one frame, you lose all of it as well. So you can <laughs> be forced to start over from the start. Um, so now we escaped all of the early game we got from outset. And you're going to notice that this cutscene is a bit weird. There's just text boxes out in the nowhere. Uh, this is actually a cutscene with King of Red Lions, and he's supposed to give you the Wind Waker. However, he's not spawned into the overworld, so you're just talking to nobody, but the cutscene still exists, so you can get the Wind Waker. Um, and in HD, the reason we usually go here, if you watch the previous GDQ runs, is to get the grappling hook. However, on the GameCube version, the most broken item is actually the Wind Waker, so this is all the, all, the entire purpose we want to go here. Because uh, now we can get the Wind Waker, we can do a glitch during a storage. Now, there's a lot of different uses with storage. Uh, one of the most important ones, however, is something known as dry storage and camera lock. So you remember how I said that the camera can flip me around every frame so that I can gain speed automatically? Well, you can actually do that with the Wind Waker with no speed. So if I climb up a ledge and I take out the Wind Waker I'm falling with it, and then I cancel it exactly three frames before I land, I can double cancel the Wind Waker. Yeah, frame early. Frame early. There we, go. there we go. Okay, so if I do that now, if I take out the Wind Waker, I will actually be able to control Link even though I'm in this mode. So if I hold up an analog stick, uh, since Link normally always has to face the camera when he plays a song since he's doing a cutscene, uh, the camera is locked onto him, which means that if I'm in the water and I hold up, it's going to cost Link to turn around every single frame. And that allows me to get a bunch of speed, and I can then super swim anywhere I want in the ocean. Uh, and coming up right here is the closest that Wind Waker has to our Rome Warp. So I'm actually going to go to this random submarine. Um, however, if I enter this, what's going to happen is there's a bunch of moblins with lanterns. And they're going to act a little bit strange from how it normally would. And I'm now in Forsaken Fortress. <laughs> yeah, so the lantern or the lantern holding moblins are specifically programmed to throw you in the Forsaken Fortress one prison cell if you don't currently have a sword. And that happens anywhere you can encounter uh, yeah. a lantern holding moblin. Normally, you would never notice this on a casual playthrough, since the only times you wouldn't have a sword is beginning of outset or FF1. So it, it makes sense, like, design-wise. However, with sequence breaks, you can heavily abuse that. Uh, and there's a few reasons we want to do Forsaken Fortress 1. Number one is we would really like a sword. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and number two is that by beating for Second Fortress 1, King of Red Lions will spawn onto the overworld of the game, which is essential to make the game run, uh, or to work, I should say, because otherwise you're going to get a soft lock later on. Um, so we're going to be going through this here. Um, right here, uh, if you, you want to read like a quick donation before I get to the next section, uh, now would be a decent time for that. All right, let's take $5 from Agent Otter. Linkus and Gymnast playing Wind Waker? Shut up and take my blue rupee. <laughs> Thank you. Um, right here, after I knock him down so he dies, I make sure I roll next to where we normally land in Forsaken Fortress 1. Uh, that's actually because that is the trigger for spawning the sword in the end. So I never had to get it knocked out of my inventory, but it's still going to be there now. I also take the time to pick up the rupees, and these lanterns are always on the same cycle, so I don't really have to worry about it. Um, coming up also here is going to be the second case scenario of you seeing a use of storage. So, like I said earlier, you can use a lot of different, like, you can do a lot of different things with this storage pitch, and one of which was the super swim. However, you can also do something known as chest storage. So we're going to do the same glitch again, but in this situation, instead of having control over Link in the Wind Waker, we're going to have control over him while opening up a chest. Now, the reasoning this is useful is because the developers actually changed how Link's hitbox is while opening up a chest. So you're going to hear that it's like trying to open up constantly. That's why the sound is weird. Now, when you open up a chest, the developers wanted to get closer to the chest than you're normally able to. So they actually shrank Link, Link's hitbox and made the collision not look for like fine details. So what that means is I can walk up here. I can walk up this wall here. And then I want to get up to the top of this room, but that's not going to be a problem, because what I can do instead is I can just side hop and just walk up the pillar. <laughs> I 
And I'm also going to get paid for this, by the way, and the Ruby sound here. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, the game supports glitches, I promise. Uh, but no, whatever you store it in your chest, you actually get it when you void out or you go through a loading zone and whatnot. Uh, so that's how I get it. Right here, I'm going to pick up this barrel. I'm going to wait until the Moblin starts walking. So now, and I'm going to drop it. Uh, this is a mechanic they have to help casuals, so, so you don't get spotted as quickly with a barrel. Uh, if a guard is looking for you and you have a barrel over your head and you put it down, um, you have a much smaller hitbox to get spotted for about five seconds. So you can use that to your advantage to sneak past them. Um, coming up right here, I'm just going to kind of finish Forsaken Fortress 1, uh, pick up the sword and go through a cutscene. So now would be a great time for a couple of donations, actually. All right, let's take a $512 donation from Modus Ponens. <laughs> I said a couple of small donations. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> but now I started, I gotta finish. Yeah. My mom loves Zelda, but she died of cancer in November. I wish I could watch this brilliant Wind Waker run with her, but in lieu of that, it's my honor to donate to the Prevent Cancer Foundation in her memory. Good luck, Linkus7, and let's get that Link's Awakening run, and then that super bonus milestone. <laughs> Honk! Honk! Yeah, if you guys haven't seen Link's Awakening, by the way, on the Switch, uh, when I picked up that up uh, when it came out, it was two hours. It's now about an hour. So you definitely want to get your donations in, because that run has gone through so much since its launch. It's already an amazing speed run. Um, but yeah, anyway, sorry for cutting you off. Donations, go. Okay. Uh, quick one, quick <laughs> one, quick one. Right. $40 from Jose Rui. So I get to see Wind Waker being run while I'm in Italy, and the game isn't even run in Italian this time? I demand my pausa! <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I also have $100 from uh, Lyra Sudo. Well, Italian is the fastest non-Japanese language for that this is game, true. so... Yeah, if you want to lose two and a half hours now doing the, uh, a couple of the glitches, then you could go with Italian. Maybe we can switch right now. Uh, but anyways, we actually have like three, four minutes more of cutscenes, so just feel free to go ahead and read donations. Um, I'll let you know. Oh, wow, cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I have, from Hero of Seasickness, $1,000. Wow. And their comment is... Oh, there is nothing better than a Legend of Zelda run at GDQ. Destroy Ganondork and destroy Cancer. I've also got $200 from Matt Nicholson. Beating out Cancer and great games done quick? Honk to that, I say. Good luck. Oh. Honk oh, win. That was a long honk. Good luck on the Wind Waker run. Oi. <laughs> is this the meme of this run? Oi. I think that and honk is, is what's going to get us here. All right. Honk. Uh, $25 from Oro. Dude, where's my car? All right, well, if you're into puns, let's do uh, $20 here from Darian. What time does the Twilight Princess go to sleep? At midnight. Ooh. <laughs> this is a great crowd we have here. Uh, very supportive. <laughs> let's see. $100 from Boomy Go Boom. Watching AGDQ with my wife after getting through the week sick. Great to see everyone donating and meeting the incentives. Heard the announcement for Link's Awakening and knew we had to chip in. Can't wait to see this game destroyed. Hype! Hype! $75 from Odd Has One Eye. Great watching Link has play Wind Waker. He always delivers fantastic commentary. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Um... I really appreciate that. <clears throat> um, but yeah, so now we're finally done with the cutscenes uh, for Civic Imports 1. So the first thing we're going to do now, uh, and a couple of important things that you're going to notice throughout the run, is that now when we beat, uh, wind, or we beat for Second Fortress 1 and we spawn at Windfall, 
Uh, you're going to notice that we kind of popped off right there next to King of Red Lions, and that is very essential because um, to avoid you from sequence breaking, um, there's a couple of flags in checking where you should actually spawn in the game, depending on what you have done throughout the game. So in this situation, I'm never going to go and buy the sale and enter King of Red Lions. And that makes the game think that I'm always supposed to be at Windfall Island because I haven't left yet, because that's a check. Uh, so that means that wherever I am in the game now, uh, for a long period of time, I should add, uh, if I save and quit the game or if I game over, I will always spawn at Windfall. Uh, and that is how the route is based on. We're also actually going to save Tingle here. Cling. Um, Tingle in the SP version gives you something known as the Tingle Tuner. You're also going to notice, I actually have a chair next to me here. I actually have a Game Boy Advance prepared. Uh, I'm going to have to try and uh, double, uh, double task here using the Game Boy Advance for the Tingle Tuner as well as playing the game. Uh, because there's a specific glitch that actually uses the Tingle Tuner in the run. So you do want to have a Game Boy Advance and a linking cable to perform that glitch. You can't do the run without it, but it's slightly slower, so... Uh, trying to go fast here. Uh, now after we got the... Uh, well, we rescued Tingle and we got the Tingle Tuner, that is basically everything we need to get at Windfall Island itself. So now I'm going to go on a quest to basically collect a couple of items I will need to progress further. So the first thing I want to do is I actually want to go and get the Grappling Hook uh, Dragon Roost. However, uh, there's a lot of cutscenes there, and the getting the bottle there is actually really slow. So I'm going to do something else. I'm instead going to get storage again. I'm going to enter the water, and I'm going to do another Super Swim right here. Uh, and this Super Swim is going to be towards a submarine at Bomb Isle, uh, because this, uh, this submarine only actually has three enemies, and beating it will give you a bottle. And the game doesn't really check which bottle you have. You just need to be able to basically drop water with a bottle. So because of that, uh, I'm able to go and get a much faster bottle than I'm supposed to. Yeah, normally going to Dragoner's Cavern, you'd have to go through a bunch of cutscenes, get the delivery bag, talk to Medley, uh, talk to Komali, to, uh, and then go back to Medley to finally get the bottle that you need. Yeah. Got a slightly weird angle there, so I'm gonna fix that. There we go. Yeah, also, I'm sorry for the flickering. There's not, unfortunately, much you can do. I mean, the game is basically just moving the screen uh, 180 degrees every single frame, so there's not much you can do about that. Um, but yeah, now we should be on a good angle, so down here should be Bombao. And here on the bottom right corner of the coordinates, we should have the submarine. There we go. All right. Now we can go with the bottle. Yeah, it's a little bit tricky to maneuver. So to get the map on the D-pad, you actually need to watch the barrel cutscene at Forsaken Fortress. But I actually never uh, went ahead and watched that cutscene, which means that I need to memorize the ocean by heart and try and maneuver based around that. And it can get a little bit tricky at times. I'm also going to start my Game Boy right here. I plugged it in, right? Yeah. Good. All right. Uh, and now you're going to notice what I was talking about earlier with Windfall. So right here, I'm going to basically save and quit my game. And instead of spawning outside of the submarine where I should, I will actually spawn a Windfall. Um. And yeah, this is super useful because uh, it's very easy to super swim off of Windfall Island. Uh, really quickly, so it's faster than most of the other save warp situations that might have normally happened from wherever we save warp. Yeah, exactly. And now we're gonna connect the Tingle Tuner. Uh, basically, right now it's just sending information over to the Game Boy. If you never actually owned a Game Boy with a Lincoln cable, what the Tingle Tuner actually is is it's basically a live updating map. It's kind of like the predecessor of the gamepad. So it has a perfectly updating map on it, uh, and it's easier to find things in the ocean then. There's also some bonuses, like it will give you hints, and you know if you find something with a tingle bomb, you can get a 50 rupee, and a couple of other fun facts like that. Uh, but it also has a shop, so you can actually buy certain things. And one of those things are potions. So he will sell you potions, such as a red potion, a green potion, or a blue potion. Uh, and that is very useful, because for one of the glitches in this game, we actually need to be dead at zero HP. And the only way to survive that is by getting healed while you are in that glitch state. However, with the Tingle Tuner, it doesn't care about you drinking a bottle with soup like it normally would. It just kind of kicks in the heal effect after you pay him. So that's why it's so useful to have this. So right here, I'm going to do a different kind of a super swim. I'm going to actually go towards uh, Fire Mountain right here. And I'm going to go up against it. And I'm actually going to take a lot of damage right now from this. Because uh, he really doesn't want to be against a uh, volcano. 
And then when I'm at a quarter of a heart, I'm gonna maneuver back here. I'm gonna head over to Dragon Roost, okay. Okay, and then hopefully we can get this right here. Uh, this is one of my favorite glitches in the run. Uh, so here we go, okay. Hold this. I just pressed the B button. Now? <laughs> yeah, now. Normally I have this on my table and I actually use my nose while I'm zombie hovering. Uh, <laughs> uh, so that I don't need to waste any time pausing the game. But uh, it's kind of hard with this setup, so we just got gymnast. So there we go. All right, so how that glitch actually works is when you go down to zero HP and you stand up, you have a short amount of time to perform an input before the game over screen appears. So what you can do then is you can do a jump slash, but the game developers actually had the thought of what happens if you do an input during this time. And the reason the time even exists at all is because that's when the fair would kick in and heal you. Um, but if you do the jump slash, then you will do it for one frame, and then the game's going to cancel it, and gravity's going to kick in and push you down. But because I'm in midair now, if I do B, uh, a B input, I can do a midair jump slash. And this gains a very small amount of height. So if you press the B button about eight to nine times per second, you will gain the same amount of height as gravity is pulling you down. So that means that if you're able to mash like 13, 14, 15 times per second, you can start hovering really, really quickly. That's why uh, you hear so many controller noises, because uh, I'm kind of just going crazy with mashing the B button over there. Um, now we're able to enter Dragon Roost. And all of that basically skipped a delivery bag. I normally need to go through a lot of cutscenes to get the delivery bag. Uh, thank you. I'm going to give that back to you <laughs> for the next hover. Um, but yeah, so it allows us to enter Dragon Roost early. And I don't actually need to beat any dungeons in the speedrun, by the way. Uh, but I do, however, need some items. And in this dungeon, you get the grappling hook, which is the most essential item uh, to make one of the glitches work. So I do need to get it. Uh, there is actually one use of the Tingle Tune right here, uh, which is one of the secrets I mentioned earlier. So Tingle actually gives you a bit of a hint right here, and I can use that to my advantage. So if I have a bomb here, and I will place it on this little crack here where the steam is coming up, if I use a Tingle bomb for 10 rupees, uh, it's actually going to give me a 50 rupee that's hidden right here. And yes, the fastest way to damage down here is getting just hit by these guys. Yeah, unfortunately. Come on. I'm gonna go a little bit safer as well. Yeah. Alright, so coming up here is the oh boy, red battery. Oh no, don't die on me. <laughs> <laughs> um that'd be fun. Panicking looking for double A batteries. It'd be good though, I hope. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so now I'm going to get another quick storage here, and this is to skip this cutscene coming out into this room. I also actually need to explode myself right here, because I need to be at a quarter of a heart. So hopefully I can get the second uh, zombie have right here. This is a longer one, so let's hope for the best. Okay, here we go. Oh, I almost touched the ground there. Okay. Okay, I think we should be good. Okay. Yeah, that one's, that one's a bit tricky because you have to change the items that are in the Tingle Tuner shop while you're doing the zombie hover. Yeah. Because uh, when you start the zombie hover, you're on the Tingle Bomb, but you need to switch over to the red potion. Yeah. Yeah, that's when I would normally, like I said, use my nose. Right there, I kind of just mashed a bit slower because I had a lot of height. I knew I wouldn't touch the ground so that I could actually change the items I had equipped. <sighs> Anyways, uh, this is actually a pretty good time for a few donations, because there's a lot of stuff coming up later, so that would be a great time. Up. 
Hop. Hop. Oi. <laughs> uh, just having some minor technical difficulties up here, but doing fine. Let's go ahead with Reaper Hulk coming in at $3,000. Wow. My wife lost her father to cancer six years ago, and a close friend was taken just days ago. GDQ's support of the Prevent Cancer Foundation is a wonderful reminder of the compassion and generosity of the speedrunning community. Thank you all. Now let's fragment memory, prevent cancer, skip barriers, and enjoy an amazing Wind Waker run. I've also got Commodore Perry coming in at $20.20. There might not be any pausa, but it's still for a good causa. <laughs> oh, well, in that case, I've also got $20 from CJ. Zelda puns, you say? I've got a medley of them. I could go on and on and on, so don't get impatient. You might have noticed right here that the Moblin is kind of angled on the side. Uh, <laughs> Uh, if you get storage, you can save like a full one second uh, because you can hit him while he's landing. And it, it just looks funny mostly because you can make it so that he's, well, angled <laughs> and skewed to the side. Um, but yeah, now after we went through all of Dragon Roost, uh, we can now get the grappling hook. Now this is where the run uh, starts to get difficult. Uh, <laughs> or I should say really difficult. So uh, coming up now is the newest glitch, and it's the main reasoning why we're playing in a Japanese version. So, already from the get-go right now, I'm going to start setting up something known as memory corruption. Uh, now, both me and Gemnus are going to be explaining parts of this. Um, but basically, uh, for the longest time, barrier skip it was not possible on the GameCube version. And the main reasoning for that is because even though we have the Super Sim glitch, uh, that does not work on the ground. It only works in the water, which means there was no glitch to gain a lot of like distance and speed on the ground. Uh, but when Waker HD had something known as item sliding, and that works on the ground. So we found a method to do barrier skip, but it requires a lot of speed, which, you know, lacked on the SD version. However, what we ended up discovering is on the Japanese version, there are some problems and, tech, uh, and technical issues uh, with how the game sorts out RAM and memory. Uh, and that can be heavily abused. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is, and I want to head to Forest Haven, because this is where the start of the setup happens. And this is why this is the hardest part, because if anything goes wrong in the entire setup, which can also be based on luck and not just execution error, I have to go back to this exact point of the game. Because I cannot save when I start this until I'm completely done with it. Uh, so the first thing I did right there is I got storage. However, I got storage a second time with text on the screen. Uh, that allows me to basically have the glitch active while I'm super swimming. Uh, and why that's useful is because there's actually a cutscene that wants to play at Forest Haven. But what's going to happen now is you're going to see the Link is just going to pop <laughs> in place here. Uh, and that's because the cutscene tried to start, but after one frame I stored it so that I simply uh, skipped it entirely. And I'm now going to go in here and I'm going to enter Beetle's boat. And I'm going to buy a bait bag and Swedish meatballs. <laughs> oh! <laughs> yeah, this is the first ever Wind Waker route to actually buy bait. Yeah. Any percent run. <laughs> the excitement. Yeah, we finally get to see Beetle in a speed run. I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> uh, right there, I dive down with my Wind Waker so I can go underneath the water, and then I can swim inside a Forest Haven. And if you're in a base of water and there's a base of water above you, you will always get prioritized to be put up to the higher location. So that allows me to skip the entire like long sequence of going here, because I was going to be popped up into the loading zone, and then we're in. Um, coming up here, I'm actually going to need to call for uh, um, focus time. I have to count to 70, exactly 70. It can't be 69, it can't be 71, it has to be 70. So I'm actually going to go Swedish mode right here. And I'm going to count in Swedish. Uh, Jim is also going to backup count. So if you guys are noticing your IKEA furniture at home is starting to move, I very much do apologize. But I really do need to focus here. <laughs> All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 27, 28, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47. 46 right now, yeah. 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 661, 62, 63, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70. All right. All right. So, um. This glitch will not make a lot of sense, and we're going to get into a lot of detail more later when the actual like effects of it is coming into play. But basically, this area has very little RAM available, and by dropping the meatballs out of bounds, uh, there is not like there's almost it's almost out of memory at this point. So what I do then is I stand at a specific spot where water droplets are coming down from me, and what happens then is I can take out my grappling hook without it actually being pulled out. That's what we call invisible pulls. Uh, so right now, in memory, there is 70 grappling hooks at all times, and they will not get cleared. Uh, so that's what you need to know for now. Uh, also right here, you're going to notice that these chukes are a little bit strange. Uh, right here, I'm doing something known as deep tree cutscene skip. So I stored the cutscene of the chews getting knocked off the tree. Uh, so the first, cut, the first frame of the cutscene played, which is when they go forward, but then it got uh, stored and cancelled. Uh, that means that their AI is messed up, so they just keep going forward in an infinite amount. So what I need to do then is I need to push them out through the wall because when they go enough far out of bounds, they will actually despawn because of how far away from the game they go. Uh, and I need to do this for all of these twos but one. And the main goal of this is that I'm going to try and basically get crushed by the Deku Tree's head at the same time as the last two died by going too far out of bounds. So now all of them should be out. And now I should only have one left on this right side here. And we're going to try and do the side up. So I'm going to try and line this up with the side up here. I'm going to try and j side hop at a specific part of the Deku Tree's mouth. And it's going to count now two, three, four, five, six. Got All right, it. We're good. All right. Uh, so basically, what ended up happening was uh, the the uh, the Deku tree normally only does that animation when he tries to shake off the chews. But since I store the cutscene, he keeps doing that animation fully. So if I can like, get crushed by the head by standing at a specific spot. Um, the game is going to void me out. But during that entire void out, because of storage, uh, and the game is still running in the background, if the Chew dies during the entire void out screen, then it's going to know that you killed all the Chews and the cutscene activated. So it's going to hit the flag that you watch the cutscene and you can just go up and get the Deku Leaf immediately. So you don't have to watch all of that. Uh, and this saves a good amount of time. It's like a solid two minutes. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, the collision for that floor doesn't quite line up with the visual texture of the leaf. Yeah, so. yeah you shouldn't do this trick. By the way, it saves four seconds and loses 50 if you fail it. But uh, I, I promised everyone I would go for it at home. So <laughs> thankfully we got it. All right. So um, like we were mentioning earlier about that there's currently 70 grappling hooks loaded in memory. Um, the game is going to do strange things uh, with the memory right now. I'm actually going to let Gymnast kind of explain it as I do this uh, section of the Super Swims. Right, so Linkus pulled out 70 invisible grappling hooks earlier while he was inside the Forest Haven. Uh, what technically happened during uh, that entire process is Linkus was actually uh, fragmenting roughly 10 kilobytes of in-game memory per each grapple hook that he pulled. So uh, with all those, he managed to fragment successfully about 700 kilobytes of uh, memory that the game uses to just load, like, you know, maps, actors, and all that good stuff. Um, so basically, every time he pulls out the grapple hook, uh, the game, uh, like, uses part of its memory to store information about that grapple hook in one area. But because it can't load uh, more information about the grapple hook in another area, it actually just completely fails to spawn the grapple hook at all. But that previous portion of memory that uh, still has grapple hook information will still hold that information about the grapple hook. But 
the game doesn't actually know that because it lost the reference to that information. So the game knows that something is there in memory, but it doesn't know what it is, and it's not going to let it be used for anything else as long as uh, the game is powered on. The game will fix itself if we do like a hard reset or a soft reset, but uh, we're not going to be doing that until we have successfully done the big exploit that's coming up. And so right now, uh, Linkus is actually going to be fragmenting even more memory. Uh, we've gotten to a point where we've managed to fragment so much memory uh, within the game's RAM that uh, simply swimming between different islands on the overworld is going to fragment even more memory. So we're doing a very specific series of super swims right here that hit uh, specific islands all in a specific order so that we can hopefully get the memory to be fragmented uh, in a specific way for what's coming up. So first you go to Cabana, and then you swim back over here uh, to the Forest Haven. And then from the Forest Haven, you want to swim north to Bomb Isle. Then over to the right here. Super swimming is a bit weird because your controls are actually inverted while you do this. Now we go back to load Forest Haven again. Now we load Bomb Isle again, then we go over to Bird's Peak Rock, and finally we go over to Thorn Ferry. If the fragmentation is set up correctly so far, uh, you should notice that there are a lot of actors kind of missing here from Thorn Ferry. Specifically, the vines that normally block uh, the island are gone, so we can enter into okay. it. I almost fell. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, uh, so to simplify that, uh, we loaded a lot of stuff into memory that should not be there. So anytime we load something at this point, there is not enough space for it. So we keep filling up the memory. So imagine at this point that 80% of the game can load, and the, the rather 20% just can't load, uh, to simplify it. And with the specific super swim we just did now, we made sure that the game will not have enough memory to load these vines blocking Thorn Fairy, um, simply put. And um, like Jim just also mentioned, anytime we load anything, we're going to load it. And that's why the time estimate is an hour 35, and that's why I said there's a good chance we might redo the setup. That's because anything that takes memory will affect this glitch. So let's say that I get thunder in the game, which is luck-based. That's going to change my memory. If I have water droplets because I was in the water, that's going to change my memory. If there's wind in the background, these lines, they change the memory. So you can make a route that works most of the time, but you can never guarantee it to always work first try, even if you do perfectly, because such small variables does make a difference. Uh, and that's the kind of how technical this game has gotten, um, and how why it took so long for us to even have any chance at finding these giant sequence breaks. Uh, right here, by the way, I do a death warp, because um, if I would save and quit, I would kind of get my memory back. Um, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to keep doing these very specific super sims through these coordinates. Uh, however, I'm also going to try and obtain chest storage in the ocean while I'm doing these. So the first thing I need to do is I need to do double storage right here, like I did earlier, so that I can store something while I'm super swimming. Uh, that's really good. Uh, and then I'm going to also make sure that I'm swimming underneath this dock so that I can keep getting my area fills. And then um, after I charge up a bit of speed, we're now going to do these specific swims. So I'm going to go from Windfall, and I'm going to head straight upward so that I load Wind Temple. Then I'm going to leave Wind Temple, and I'm going to go to Crescent Moon. Now I need to be very careful, because if I actually touch the blue choose right here, uh, we'll be screwed. So I need to be very careful. And also, the controls are inverted right here. So I need to be very careful to not hit them before I open up this chest. Beautiful. Uh, now we're going to have this <laughs> ice emoji. So this is a normal chest storage like in First, uh, First Second Fortress. However, this had a special item in the chest, which is, you know, when you get the jingle and the screen kind of voids out to show, you know, in a bright light your item you obtained. Uh, but since we stored it, it's going to be no music, so very quiet now. Um, and <laughs> you're only going to see the eyes. Uh, hopefully, yes, okay. if I maneuvered right, which I did, uh, we will see the game again, because when the chest unloads, then it's going to unload that uh, effect of making the game pitch black. Uh, and I'm now going to super swim at Windfall, and like I said, the order of these swims makes no sense. It's just people went into memory and checked how much kilobytes you can get more on the memory corruption uh, by going to this specific order of things. 
Uh, the reason I specifically want to do it against this part here is because I'm actually getting more air from it, because I'm clipping into the wall with my chest storage, which is why I went here specifically. I'm now going to go here. I'm going to go past this island. And now I want to load for Second Fortress four times. So one. Also, all of these turnarounds have to be frame perfect, so uh, it's a bit of a monk ass mode. Okay, please don't crash my game. Please don't crash my game. Okay. All right, so it's not over yet. So now I made it to Forsaken Fortress, and my game didn't crash. However, we will not know if everything I just did went well until I enter the Forsaken Fortress 1's room. Um, however, it's really, really fast to go up and check that. Because of my chest storage, I can just walk up these walls. So <laughs> I'm just going to be rolling up here. Um, yeah, and a lot of the actors at Forsaken Fortress are actually like completely missing right now. Like, There's supposed to be a torch right there. Uh, there's supposed to be a door frame right here. But, yeah. uh, All right, let's hope for the best. Just Please. go in. Here we go. Yes! All right. <laughs> <It worked>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <sighs> okay. All right. So you're going to notice right now that there's, there's no music, there's water, and there's two pirates kind of drowning down there. Now, um, this is normally where a cutscene is supposed to play. Now, if you set everything up perfectly, there was not enough memory to load the cutscene. Um, but the area in which the cutscene is being played in is. So that's why you can see the two pirates in the water, because that normally appears during the cutscene itself. Uh, and I also had to make sure I broke those pots, because if I didn't, then I would actually soft log right here, because the game does not have enough memory to do a loading zone. However, if you break a pot, it clears up a few kilobytes of memory, and you can then open the door. Um, so now I should be able to just head up here, and we should be able to... Oh, yeah, also, there's no fight here, um, because I skipped the cutscene. And I should now be able to just open the door and head down to Hyrule, if everything went correct. All right. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> Uh, you're also going to notice right here that I actually have a green tunic on me, and I have a Master Sword and a Hero Shield in my hand. Now, the, uh, the actual green tunic will not stay. Don't worry, it's still a comfy pajama percent run. Uh, however, <laughs> the sword and the shield does actually stay, because these cutscenes are actually played in-game. And the R and the B button has the sword and shield equipped to it. And since the shield I didn't even have to begin with, and the sword is a higher upgrade than I previously had, because I had the Hero Sword before, not the Master Sword, they will actually be equipped permanently to my buttons. Uh, and that is the entire reason this route works, because you cannot damage Phantom Ganon without a Master Sword. So the only reason this works to begin with is because the game just is hard-coded to attach a Master Sword here to you. Otherwise, we would not actually be able to do this. Uh, either way, um, there's going to be a lot of stuff to explain when we get down to Hyrule, so now would be a good time for a few donations. All right. Uh, is this what? Okay. Yeah, it does work. I am on. What is... <laughs> Welcome. More technical difficulties. It's awesome. <laughs> um, let's do $25 from Carly HB. Had to donate during one of my favorite Zeldas and for one of my... And for my favorite Zelda runner, Linkus7. Good luck on the run, and let's get that Link's Awakening incentive met. Yes, let's do it. I've also got $75 from Hylian Homemaker. So excited for another Wind Waker run by Linkus7. As Beetle would say, thank you to all the runners, and bye to cancer. <laughs> All right. You want to read another one? Yeah. Uh, let's do a hundred dollars here from James and Leah. Watching Linkus complete the puzzle last year was hilarious and really hooked our attention. But the barrier skip blew my mind. Linkus is such an amazing speedrunner, and we love watching you play Wind Waker. Honk. <laughs> Honk. 
And while we're on that, one more for audience participation. Five dollars from Kato Perke Nerd. Kato Poke Nerd, excuse me. We have some honk. honk. We have some oi. But can we get some hoink? Hoink. There we go. Keep being awesome, Linkus. And let's get that Super Mario World One Mine incentive met. Thank you. <laughs> what was that last word? <laughs> it was a combination of hoy and honk. Uh, yeah, that appears to be correct. Okay. <clears> Oi. <throat> Uh, let's see. There's a $10 donation here from someone named Linkums. Hi, Linkums here. People keep mistaking my name for yours. Please advise. I'm sorry. <laughs> How could you do this to that <laughs> poor man? I know. I, I promise to change my username as quick as I can. Um, anyway, so now we're going down to Hyrule. Um, uh, if you've ever watched a Wind Waker stream, you will know about the whole meme about the friend zone thing. Basically, because of how precise this entire route is, if you do not have 2.8 kilobytes of spare RAM, your game is kind of soft like here because it can't load the text box. So in a lot of runs, and they technically could still happen here, but, but because of how much stuff was loaded in the tower of a second fortress, I'm not too worried. But sometimes you can, yeah, you cannot get this text box to load in your soft lock here forever uh, while Link is like giving a happy stare at Tetra and she gives a disgusted face because she like is passed out. <laughs> so it's, um, it's a really, really weird cutscene that can get soft locked. Uh, but now we did actually get through the cutscene and now we are able to enter Hyrule. Now, Barrier Skip itself, um, is quite different from the SD, uh, from the HD version. So on the HD version, you will see that I'm actually basically, I'm, I'm going up and I'm doing a speed glitch and a clip through the barrier. Uh, what we want is we, would, we want it to not load at all. So you cannot corrupt the memory enough that you just, there's no memory to load at all because these areas are so big that if you would do that, you would just soft lock or crash your game right here. So we basically loaded in a situation where nine out of 10 objects can load in Hyrule. And which one of these 10 objects that doesn't load is unfortunately luck-based for a human like us. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave the second, we're gonna leave on the other side here. We're gonna check if the barrier is there or not. And if it is, then we're just gonna go back and forth through the loading zone and check again. And we're gonna do that until it just doesn't load. Uh, so now is uh, the time to do bless RNG in the chat and just hope that it's gone. And he's going to check with the leaf or not. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to just show the first time. So you're going to notice yeah. right there that the barrier is, in fact, there. You can also see that the flagpoles are not there. What I'm going to do for the next attempt is I'm actually going to blow a leaf. Uh, the reasoning for that is because it's slightly faster. So I'm going to blow the leaf, and I'm going to check if it hits a wall. If it hits a wall, then I know it's actually uh, there. So let's see here. Yeah, so you see that it kind of made a spreading animation when it actually hit something. So I'm going to do this a couple of times until you see that the leaf doesn't hit anything and it just goes forward. And that's when we know that the barrier is unloaded and we have successfully performed barrier skip. All right, and for reference, uh, the barrier is a fairly small object memory-wise. Uh, it actually takes less memory to load the barrier than it does to load like a text box because the barrier is like just a small object that's been scaled up to be like absolutely huge on the map. Yeah. So fourth try, let's see how lucky we can get. Uh, if you want to go for a record attempt, this is the unfortunate part. You need really good luck in this. Um, the most I've ever had is like 30-something tries. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how long we get to hang out here. And each try is about 20 seconds, right? Yeah, yeah. 20 seconds per attempt. This is number five? Yep. Five, OK. So we've successfully lost at least a minute and 20 <laughs> seconds now. <laughs> minute 40. All due to how the game decided to load this map each time. Yeah. All right. Let's hope it goes away soon. At least we have a high time estimate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. So also, each time that uh, Linkus goes back in the castle and then uh, back out to Hyrule, you actually corrupt a very small amount of memory every time you load uh, the like overworld Hyrule. Um, corrupt like, I think it's a third of a kilobyte or something. So that's why, thankfully, we can keep doing this here and just keep on retrying. Is that a Ganon laugh about this that I hear? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, this is Ganon's revenge for the other GDQs. Ah, oh, man. 
Ganon's Come on. trying really hard to not make <laughs> the memory work with you. Yeah, this is very bad luck. In uh, the practice run with it, because I made a backup save file just in case something did go wrong, uh, so we got it like six or seventh try. I would say that's about average. Less than more than ten tries is very unlucky. In average, I would say it's probably ten percent ish. Um, there we go. All right. <laughs> All right. Barrier go poof. <laughs> yeah. We blew away the barrier. Uh, but yeah, so... Um, <laughs> yeah, I apologize for everyone that might have joined this run not from the start, because that might not have made too much sense. Uh, but yeah, I recommend it to go and check the entire VOD, because the setup for this one trick takes 20 minutes, so uh, it's quite a long setup. Uh, something really exciting, actually, was that when I submitted this for GDQ, this run was way less marathon safe than it is now, just due to uh, coincidence. So when I submitted it, I was going to have to do a crazy zombie hover in the end of the run. But a new glitch was found about a month ago or so. Um, and it makes the last final trick of the run, it's still very difficult, but it makes it a lot more consistent because I don't have to rely on as much luck. So it's going to be very, very useful. So. Um, now what I'm going to do when I enter the trials right here, and you're also going to notice that memory corruption is still active, like the bridge doesn't load, so like I can't go over there now. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually head into the Earth Temple trial, and normally we would never enter the trials on any category other than glitchless. Um, but why we want to enter here specifically, I'm actually going to pause so you can see right here. So normally if you don't have a bomb bag or arrow or a bow, you cannot get arrow drops or bomb drops. Now, as you can see, I don't have a bomb bike on here, but if I pick this up, I have a bombs. Um, and I have a zombie. <laughs> no, not Oi, that's ah. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Hello. They're mad that you stole their bombs. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so normally, if you don't have a bomb bag, you cannot get a bomb drop anywhere in the game. But for some reason, the Earth Temple Trial is the only exception where those coffins are guaranteed to have a bomb drop. And if you pick them up, you will get the bomb icon added into your inventory. Uh, now, I, I actually don't have a bomb bag, so I only have zero bombs. But there is another glitch I can do to get around that. Uh, right here, I have to try and do a glitch known as Trial Skip. Beautiful. First try. Yes. So, yeah, so when you climb up a wall, as long as you're partially inside of the wall, uh, if you roll on the very first frame, you can actually clip out of bounds. And I then immediately take out the deco leaf. However, the hard part about this is that you're very low, you're on the same level as the loading zone, and you normally can't just leaf there because you're losing height when you're leafing. But you can do something known as a leaf pump, where you press the A button to cancel it, and then a leaf like a frame later. And by doing that, you can keep actually gaining a small amount of height because you're basically taking it out and in uh, over and over again. And if you do that like five, six times in a row, you can just make it to the loading zone, skipping all of the trials. Yeah, and so uh, to put that in perspective, the barrier skip saves roughly like two hours, probably more than that. Uh, the trial skip saves a measly 10 minutes in <laughs> yeah. comparison. <laughs> yeah, it's nothing. Uh, also, here the maze is always the same. You're supposed to kill Phantom Ganon, and his sword will point towards the right direction. But you can't actually memorize it. It's always down, left, up, left, right, up. So as long as you memorize that, you can kind of just go through the entire uh, maze and get to the end. And I do actually still have memory corruption active in the background of my game. So I need to make sure after I pick up these lighters to save and quit my game, because I do not want this glitch to be active anymore because it can cause a lot of troubles because, uh, well, the game is not going to properly load the last cutscenes of the game, and uh, that would be a very bad time. Yeah, the boss after getting a light arrow's puppet yeah. cannon also doesn't really work correctly yeah. if you have too much memory corruption. Now, about the bombs thing, you, uh, like I showed earlier, I have zero bombs, but I have the icon. The arrow, the light arrow, will give me the bow and the three elements. However, you're going to notice that there's a difference in this, and that is that you can actually see that I have 60 arrows here. Uh, that is because I picked up the quiver upgrade earlier, uh, so that I can actually have usable arrows for Papa Cannon. Uh, right here also, it's actually doing a full console reset instead of just a soft reset. Uh, that is because when I save and quit, it's going to realize that the memory has been corrupted or, you know, it's not properly working the way it should. So it actually completely turns off the console and reboots it. Um, 
and that allows me to then be back on track. So now we're just playing. We shouldn't worry about any crashes or soft locks or anything like that. Um, so now we should be able to make our way through here. <laughs> I thought I was going to miss. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyways, so we're going to head up to Pup again now. So now would be a good time for a donation or two. All right, got a couple of quick ones here. I have a $70 anonymous donation. $70 for the lesson on counting to 70 in Swedish. <laughs> You're on, welcome. <laughs> on the other hand, a Brad donates $250. Linkus, can you please tell all my furniture to go back to where it was? I'm feeling a little cramped right now. <laughs> I'm sorry, but um, maybe next year. <laughs> One more quick one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. go ahead. Uh, let's do $25 from That Morrow Gal. My favorite Zelda joke. Why hasn't Link heard about the Gorons? They're too underground. Great run, Linkus. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> 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 oh. Um, but yeah, so now uh, what you're going to notice in this cutscene is it's very similar to the previous cutscene. You're going to notice that I have a fully upgraded Master now and a Mirror Shield. Thank you, game. Uh, and it's the same situation as last time. This cutscene actually uses those items. So we now actually have the fully charged Master Sword and the Mirror Shield, even though we never had to get it. Um, and the items we have obtained throughout the game is going to be the, uh, the uh, Quiver and the Light Arrows, so I can actually fight Papagandon properly. Uh, we also got the grappling hook, so we can uh, grapple up the tower. Uh, we got bombs, which is going to come into use later with a glitch, with a tingle tuner. Um, so that is all the items you actually basically need to beat the game. Um, so we are all prepared now. Uh, also, if you're wondering why I actually went ahead and got the leaf, uh, the main reasoning we even get the leaf in the speedrun to begin with is mainly not for the leaf itself, but more for the fact that uh, that gives you magic, and magic is necessary for light arrows. And all of those uh, limitations just comes down to this one fight right here, uh, Papa Cannon. Uh, hopefully the Swedish sniper can come out for once. It's been a bit rusty at these GDQ events, so hopefully it will go well. Yeah, the leaf is also uh, nice because it's what allows us to blow the little uh, spiky ball enemies called Morths uh, up to the final platform after this yeah. fight. You don't like fairy hover? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Get your reason in the chat. Let's go. Oh, boy. Yeah, so normally the game would want you to use the boomerang to knock down uh, the tail of Puppet Ganon on his first phase, but... Uh, it's not required to do that, so the fastest way to beat this boss is by simply sniping the tail three times in a row, which is difficult because the tail moves around very erratically, so... And randomly as well. Yeah. Okay. One. Bomb. Two. Go for it. Three. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, for the first phase, it is the hardest one because you do have to actually snipe them when he's going up there. Uh, for the second one, there is actually one strat you can do. I'll attempt it once. Uh, it is known as Crip Shot. So normally, he has to come up and down three times for three phases. However, if you have a perfect angle, uh, you have one frame to shoot him while he's moving up uh, again. And that allows you to do a double shot, so he only has to come up and down twice. Uh, let's see if I couldn't hit it or not. Let's see here. Got it. Yeah. Thankfully, we got a magic drop from one of the keys there. Yeah, if I wouldn't have got a magic drop, I would have been screwed. I'm also going to take damage here on purpose, by the way. Um, and we'll need it for later. All right, and now we only have third piece. Ah, 
Okay. Uh, because I only got one magic drop from those keys, normally I would show off some cool shots on this base. But if I run out of magic, it's a very bad situation. So unfortunately, due to my bad luck on the magic drops previously, I'm going to have to just uh, do these shots here. I actually would prefer if you can damage me here. All right. All right. So coming up now, if you watch the previous Andy Percent Windmaker round, which was on the speedrun of the HD version back in uh, SGDQ, uh 2018, you will know the trick that is about to come up right here. Uh, we struggle quite a lot. This is the Morph Hover. So one of the essential items to make it to the final platform in the game is the hook shot. But we do not have a hook shot, unfortunately. And getting it is basically impossible because you cannot get it early and to actually get it properly you have to go to Wind Temple which requires you to beat every single dungeon so it's out of the question. Uh, and you cannot use the Tingle Tuner like I was using earlier to heal myself from a Zombie Hover because it only works in areas where you actually have a... Uh, where you actually have a map. And this room, if I press D-pad up right here, nothing actually is happening because there's no uh, dungeon map for specifically Ganon's Tower. So because of that, I have to get creative. Uh, fortunately, there is a way around that, and that is something known as Morth Hover. Um, before we get onto the Morth Hover part, I actually want to take a bit of damage. And this is what I was talking about earlier with the bomb trick, the newest trick that was recently discovered. So I'm actually going to do that now to take damage. So if you have the Tingle Tuner equipped, and then you press the Tingle Tuner button on the same frame you pause the game, he will take out and do the text box of the Tingle Tuner, but he's going to take out in his hand the item that was actually equipped. And because I, fa I equip it on the same frame to a bomb, he's actually going to hold a bomb over his head instead. Uh, that allows me to basically use bombs, even though I have exactly zero of them. So that's how I'm able to do this thing here. Okay, we're going to go here. We're going to shut up. very appropriate that there's no music here. It just adds to the tension. Yeah, and also the heart beeping sound effect. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get some magic. All right, so now I wanna make it to the top. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna clear the warp pot, but then after that, I'm going to do the morph glitch. So normally in this specific room, morphs can only drop hearts if they're killed by the master sword, not any other items. That is because normally Phantom Ganon can actually kill them when he's running around, so they made it like that. Uh, that is a problem, however, because I want to kill it with a bow. Fortunately, uh, Gymnas was able to find a way around this after a long time of looking. So, um, if I line up perfectly, what I can do is I can slash the morph on the same frame that I walk into him. Because if you don't know these morphs, if you walk into them, they will jump onto you. So if I do this perfectly, you can hear I hit, I, hit, I hit him, but he's on me. Then I will roll and just pray to RNG that he moves in a good direction. Unfortunately, that is all luck right there. And I want him to go backwards um, because I need to get him off of me so I can blow him up onto the final platform for this trick to work. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to blow this morph here. And now I need to get him up onto this final platform right here. That is the mission here. Uh, and now, when, whatever he dies by right now, he will actually drop a heart. And that is the entire reason we do this setup. So I'm going to get him up on this platform here. Uh, hopefully we can get this first try. I did clear up the warp pod in case not, uh, but we'll help. Uh, oh, 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 that's good. Uh, uh, I don't know how we ended up there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Focus. All right, here we go. Got it. Oh, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh. 
Thank you, guys. I was really nervous about that one. Uh, but yeah, okay, let's breathe. So, um, what I ended up doing there was I basically just combined everything I mentioned. So I shot him with the arrow, I immediately pressed the tingle tuner and paused in my game, took out the bomb, slashed it, and then I have to zombie hover, and I need to go against the platform before I uh, kept on my tempo so I was lined up with the heart. And I also need to be really fast with this, because the heart despawns after 10 seconds. So if you do it perfectly, you get up there in like 8. So you only have like 1 to seconds to spare in that entire hover. Uh, and also, if you fall, you can get an uneven frame where you land on the ground in the same frame the heart hits you, and you don't get it. So there's a lot of stuff that can go wrong there. So fortunately, we did get that. All right. Uh, I think we have time for like the final donation of the run. So this, you can pick the best one in your opinion. I know. I mean, I know all of them are great, but what's your favorite that you can see right now? Oh man, that's uh, <laughs> that's a lot of pressure. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and go with twenty-five dollars from Nats fan. Had to donate after the Swedish counting in Wind Waker. Incredible Swede running at this <laughs> event. <laughs> Put this towards the runner's choice. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, during this cutscene, um, there's a couple of fun uh, little like facts about like this, uh, how they actually designed this cutscene. So, for example, like right here, um, th now basically, in, if you don't read G Japanese, the basis says whoever holds a Triforce has its power, and you can see that the king actually is holding the uh, Triforce. But if you go into free camera, you can see that he's like really far away from it. Uh, he's multiple feet away. So technically, no one is holding the Triforce. So there's a bunch of weird quirks in this cutscene like that that's just off screen um, when they did smart camera motions. Uh, also, I'm not sure if anyone in the crowd has been here for a previous Wind Waker run, but what is about to come up soon is a very important tradition. And that is that um, we're going to basically laugh with Ganondorf. So I want everyone in the chat and everyone in the crowd to be ready, and let's do this. Here we go. All right, beautiful. That was a great job, great job. <laughs> Oi. Oi. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so. Now when uh, now we're gonna start this fight. I'm still actually at one heart. However, there is a little bit of an Easter egg that Nintendo put in. Uh, I don't think it's ever actually mentioned in the game itself, to my knowledge, or even in instructions for that matter. But if you have the grappling hook and you use the grappling hook on Zelda, you can get an infinite amount of three hearts from her. Um, so if you ever run out of hearts during this fight, just equip the grappling hook, target Zelda and grappler, and that's what I'm gonna do right here because I prefer not to get one hit by Ganon. So I'm going to equip the grappling hook and I'm going to try and grapple Zelda. Uh, hopefully she doesn't troll me or do like team fire or anything like that. That happens sometimes. Uh, so we'll see here. Yeah, the light arrows that Zelda shoots can actually hit and damage Link. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. Face down. Now I need to time these. Got RNG. Beautiful. All right. Time and will be coming yeah, up. Yeah, time is about to come up. So get ready on time. All right, and time. <laughs> that was a time. Wow, that's really good. Make 
Anthony Bloss, dude. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, that was an amazing run. Um, I was very nervous about this run. This, uh, I know that Windbaker in general is a very unforgiving speed run, but this is this takes the record for the most um, non-marathon safe solid game I definitely ran, and I'm very happy that everything worked first try. Uh, I had a lot of trouble in practice coming here. I was even making speculations about your power, making my Wii weird. Uh, and weird stuff like that because it was just not working, but I'm happy that it worked this time. Uh, but yeah, um, if you guys want to watch more Zelda speedruns, you should check out my Twitch channel uh, at Link is 7. I speedrun a ton of different Zelda games. I, a lot of Wind Waker, Wind Waker HD. I'm also picking up Breath of the Wild 100%, which is a fun three, uh, three day grind. So if you want to watch someone stay up for 50 hours, you should check that out. Uh, also, if you're interested in learning this game, uh, there's an amazing Discord. You can go to speedrun.com slash TWW. Uh, I also, right before going to this event, made a full any percent speedrun tutorial and commentary for this game. So it would be easier for people that saw this run just now and are interested to pick up the game. So I hope that helps you out. Uh, but anyway, thank you so much, Games Done Quick, for having me. Thank you, crowd, for being so supportive. And thank you guys for watching. What an incredible run. Thank you so much, Linkus. That was, oh man, that was mind boggling.